laying some foundation. Amen? And the scripture that I want to read off of is going to be in the Matthew passage of scripture that I don't know why Sister Alice chose it. I got it on my, on my slate, among other passages of scripture. But just let me read this first, and then I will uh, begin to share some more with you today. Amen? So let's go to Matthew. Excuse me. Uh, chapter 6. And I am going to begin at verse 5, Brother, Ch Brother Tuney. Excuse me. <clears throat> As I present on prayer, it is to give us a correct biblical understanding, operations, application, and result of what prayer is all about. It is to loose us from traditional, being traditional about it, and being in traditional error. Of it. it is to loose us from us trying to use prayer to manipul manipulate God and get God to do what we want him to do. Which is one of the one of the the, the, the most common things that we try to do with prayer. We pray for, Lord, do this, Lord, do that, Lord, give me this, Lord, help me here. But we, do, we rarely pray, Lord, make me a true worshiper. Lord, make me a true disciple of Jesus. Lord, make me dead. How many of you prayed that, pray, pray that prayer recently? For the God life to spring forth. We must die. Our own life. Our old life. Our flawed, messed up, limited, corroded life. We must put that one side for the God life to emerge. And I believe today that every person, every one of us, want life, wants a greater life. And if you are a Christian here today and you have been hearing some correct teachings and you have been uh, being led correctly... I think every one of us here today want the God life. We want the eternal life. We've come to understand that it's about life and not religion. So, as we look at this verse of scripture today, let's, let's read. Let's read it together. And we are talking about prayer. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, uh, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the street of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Just a quick comment on this. Don't pray as the hypocrites. A hypocrite is in this context of prayer, and since we're dealing with prayer, is, is the person that is praying just to impress man. Just going through a religious ritual, a religious, a religious performance. Look at me. I am, you know, holier than thou. I pray, I tithe, I fast, I go to church. And it's all about external expressions, but their heart is far from God. Not only is that, not, not, not only... It is that, but it is also a hypocrite is someone who, 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 who has heard the truth, has known the truth, but don't follow the truth, but wants to pretend they're following the truth. And that happens a lot with prayer. It says, don't, don't pray like this. It says, because the person that prays like that, the person that just uses prayer for their own gratification, for their own glory, for their own wants, it says that person got their reward already. They're not getting anything from God. So maybe if you, you're not getting anything from God, we need to step back and begin to examine our prayers, how we pray, and our heart position concerning those prayers. So what be accomplished here and the objective here this morning on these messages and in this church is to get us in line with God so when we pray, we get what we pray for because we are praying according to his will, 
which is to bring about the maximum life he has for you, which is not separate and apart from you being a disciple and from you serving as a true worshiper. You're called to serve. You're called to work in the kingdom of God. Six. <clears throat> Verse six, brother. But thou, when the praise enter into thy closet, uh, if you don't mind, uh, I'm going to change the King James. Brother, would you go to, uh, to, to, to uh, the New King James? Let's go to the New King James. Uh, get rid of some of the thou's and these and so on and so forth. Not that it's just my tongue getting tripped up a little bit. But when you pray, go into your, to, into your room. And when you have shut the door, pray to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Amen. So here again, uh, as we think about these, this prayer and these instructions, and I'm going to have more to say about this. Uh, we, 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 we have made a doctrine and a religious exercise out of going into our closet or going into our room. You know, i got to have a room, or I, ha I have to have a closet. But <clears throat> really, when it speaks of that, and it's speaking in the context here, we must understand it from the, from the context, or from the application, from the working of the entirety of God's will, and it being in an intimate relationship. It's not just about going into a room. You can go into a closet, and you can be a twice a religious person as a hypocrite who doesn't go into a room. Going into a room uh, signifies intimacy. It's about into that intimate place. This verse of scripture is given before Jesus Christ is crucified, before the new covenant, before the Holy Spirit comes, before God indwells man. Amen. So at this point in time, when, we, when they are praying, they, they, they don't have the indwelling Holy Spirit. They are not in such an intimate relationship with God as we are as Christians. Because Christ had not yet been crucified, buried, and resurrected. Amen. So when we read this, we, we, we got to keep our mind open and rightly divide it that there is a natural application, a room, going to the temple, for example, that's a room, that's a natural application, but when you write it and you see from the new covenant standpoint and from the God standpoint, it is the spiritual application, and in the spiritual application, we are in an intimate relationship with God, and God is looking for intimacy. Whether you're at home, in your bathroom, in your closet, driving in your car, or walking down the road. Your secret place is that relationship between you and God. That you guard, and you watch over, and you set aside specific time to, 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 to pray and to relationship with God. But if it's going to truly be effective in those set-aside times, you need to be walking it out daily. You need to have that intimate relationship daily. Amen. So <clears throat> when you have shut your door, when you shut yourself off spiritually, no distractions, get rid of that cell phone. Turn it off. Throw it, up, throw it in another room. Turn off your TV, turn off your music, turn off everything. Shut yourself up with God. Pray to your Father who is in the secret place. Where is the secret place? Is the secret place in heaven? Okay, it's secret. Is the secret place in your bathroom? I don't know. Okay, maybe... Maybe it's your secret place. But again, application and context. Your secret place is not in heaven in that sense, or in your bathroom, or in your closet. Your secret place is in your inner man. 
is where you as a spirit being and Holy Spirit dwells together in this physical body that you can't see, no man can see, and you have the authority to keep everything else out of it. Your secret place is your inner part, your inner spiritual being, where you are in an intimate relationship, covenant union with God. That no one is to get between you and him. Not even your wife, your husband, your son, your daughter, or your little children, your little grandchildren. It is the secret place that is only for you and God. No one else can step into there and has access, has any business in there. And your father who sees in secret, your father who, who, who knows what's going on in the inner man, in the deep place, in your deep desires, he says, will reward you openly. He says, there will be an answer to that prayer. There will be a manifested answer to your prayer. Prayer. It's about a relationship, first and foremost. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions, foolish, uh, foolish <coughs> repetitions, empty, empty words, looking for things you shouldn't be looking for, just going through motions as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. It's not about the quantity of words you speak. It's not about the quantity of words that you, you say to God. It's about your heart. And in your, your words, your heart, and therefore your words lining up with God. Not impressing God. You, we know we can't impress God, right? It's not about impressing other people. And please don't try to impress yourself. Fatal flaw if you try to do that. Verse 8. Therefore do not be like them, for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. Amen. And this is qualified. It says need. A need, brothers and sisters, is a need. It's not a want. Or... I hope I could have this God. So when we think of needs, let's kind of frame that this morning. And I'm going to begin by framing it from the natural standpoint. When we think of needs, we need air to breathe. God has provided it. We need water for our physical bodies to drink. God has provided the water. We need light to, to live. God has provided the light. We need, did I say food? We need food, so God has provided the food. Amen. We need clothing, so we can hide our shame. <coughs> so God has provided for clothing. Amen. God has provided the natural things that we need to live. From God's standpoint, let me tell you something. You do not need a computer. From God's standpoint, you don't need a telephone to live physically. You do not need the internet and all the X, Y, Z's. You don't even need a car. That's not what you need to live. Do you know people lived before there were phones, computers, internet, cars? Yeah? So from that context, when we talk about needs, we must hear the scriptures from God's perspective. So, which is now more important because we are spiritual beings and God wants us to be with him in spirit, spiritual, to worship him in spirit for our eternal life and our spiritual purpose. The things we need. What do you and I need spiritually? Well, here's what we need spiritually, which God has already given. God has given Jesus Christ. Amen? What do we need spiritually? We need 
the gospel, we need to hear the gospel. Amen? We need that. To be the true worshiper God is looking for, to have the life that God created you to have, you need that. We need the Holy Spirit. God has given us the Holy Spirit. We need this personal relationship with God. God has made it possible for us to have this personal relationship. We need the assembly of the church because God put it in place. God has provided it. Everything that we need, God has already provided. He's not going to do it. He has already done it. Here's the truth. When we make that our focus, and we do what God tells us to do, and we do it His way, all the other fringe, secondary things that is part of life and may help us in some way function and to carry our service, God will bring those into place. But <clears throat> let me say it this way. I, I, I'm going to just say it this way. Okay, if I need a donkey, I was going to go with an airplane, but I decided a donkey. I'm going to use a donkey. If I needed a donkey today, because I needed to go to East End to preach the gospel, that was the only way I could get to East End. Amen. Right? And I am seeking God first for the things I need, which is, his, which is all my spiritual needs, that I may be the true worshiper that he called me to be. So as a true worshiper, now God is sending me to East End. Amen. But I need a donkey to get to East End. If I'm that true worshiper, and I'm serving God, and doing his will, you know what? That donkey will come to me. God will provide what I need to carry out my primary need. My primary purpose. God will provide. But God's provisions does not come to us when we want to live life by our own means, in our own ways, for our own purposes. Nine. Nine. In this manner, therefore, pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thou your name. I'm going to just go through this part pretty quickly because I'm going to be dealing with that at a later point. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Just listen to the words as God speaks them. Give us this day our daily bread, physically, spiritually. Keep going, brother. Just keep, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Right? It's Forgive us our debts. That, that's that, that sin obligation. That, 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 the debt that we should be paid by condemnation, by judgment. We sin. That's a debt. The, our payment, the payment is death. The payment for sin is death. He says, forgive us that debt. Forgive us that payment. How did he do it? He, do, he did it by and through Jesus Christ going to the cross and paying the sin debt for us. Amen? So forgive us our debt <clears throat> and do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and forever. Amen. Praise God. So I'm going to be Working with a number of passages of scripture as we walk through this. For today, what I am saying to you as I speak here is to lay a foundation, is to, to, to prepare, to prepare us for everything God will be saying coming forth. Remember, remembering church, that the purpose of the church and scriptures is to God's help to us so we can live life fully. You're not here this morning just to do a religious thing. 
You are here this morning to hear what God is saying and follow him. Amen? Go back to my, to my uh, slide, brother. I'm going to read this through and then I'm basically finished. This won't take much longer. Amen? The word for 2020-21. Time for the true prayer of the 